listen, sometimes you want something to happen so badly that you convince yourself it's going to happen before it happens and it skews your judgment. The Patriots were so boring and dominant for 20 years. Everybody wants the next dynasty to be fun and flashy and cool and hip. And that. I get it. Like I get that last, that last Patriot Super Bowl win over the Rams. I was bored and I live in LA and I'm a Patriot guy. But just because you want something to happen doesn't mean it's true. I'm watching this Kansas City team. Don't forget, they trailed by at least 10 points in all three playoff games last year and were outplayed by the Niners for three of the four quarters. And the team I'm watching right now, I mean, they're winning six straight wins, six points or fewer, NFL record. And they've gotten some breaks. How in God's name was that game close yesterday? How was it a three-point game? Drew Brees early was awful. They had no running game. They had 15 first downs. The Saints never had the ball. I've never seen a lopsided time of possession, 42 minutes to 18. The Saints were terrible on third down. Their best receivers were all gone. Drew Brees is coming back. It looked like it hurt to throw. And in the end, that's a three-point game. Again, people forget this. We all live in the moment. Through 11 weeks last year, through 11, that's 60% of the season, 65%. Kansas City was 7-4. and four. The defense was not top 10. I think Mahomes was like 15 in passer rating. He'd been hobbled. He hadn't been playing efficiently, consistently. It was a 7-4 and four football team. Then they got healthy. Mahomes and Andy Reid click. Passer rating goes up. Defense plays well. And they play really well. Although, and I, I, when I say this with Kansas City, I say it with affection and love. They're more fun than New England. They're flashier. They're faster. But they leave a lot of points on the floor. That game should never have been close. Drew Brees was mostly awful early. No receivers. Couldn't run. 15 first downs. Never had the ball. I mean, I, I look at these numbers this morning. Drew Brees is 15 for 34. 1 for 11 on third. 18 minutes time of possession. 15 first downs. Couldn't run the ball. Against Kansas City and that thing's a three-point game? You know, everybody always says, uh, you are what your record is. No, if that's true, then the Pittsburgh Steelers would be dominant. You're not always what your record is. Sometimes we see it in college football. You have a great record because of weak opposition. And let's be honest, the division they're in is not great. Chargers don't have the right coach. Denver doesn't probably have the right quarterback. Raiders don't have the right defense. (laughs) I don't know. I just, I look at, I, I look at the AFC right now and there are some trouble spots for the Chiefs. The Titans, the Cleveland Browns, the Ravens and the Colts. Ravens aren't in yet, but four teams that have really profound running games. What does that mean? That Patrick Mahomes sits on the sideline and watches the football game. I could absolutely see the Titans and Derrick Henry dominating time of possession, and Mahomes doesn't get the ball. I could see Cleveland doing it with that offensive line, best in the NFL. I could see the Colts doing it. I could see the Colts doing to Kansas City what the Colts did to Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers is a spectator. But I I just, I, I understand wanting after 20 years of dominance in a sport we all love, wanting something new, okay, and not only wanting something new, but wanting something fun and flashy. It doesn't work this way in the NBA. The way it usually works in the NBA is flashy wins. The Warriors were flashy, and the Heatles were flashy, and Shaq Kobe was flashy, and Magic was flashy. And then you occasionally get kind of a defensive-minded boring team, the Sonics in the 70s, the Pistons one time. You know, you get the occasional, like, kind of boring In football, Alabama's boring, and New England was boring, and I get we all want fun. But, man, I find Kansas City incredibly vulnerable, and I know their record's great, but that game should never have been even marginally competitive if you kind of look at what transpired over three and a half hours. All right, speaking of – now, so the Rams lost to the New York Jets. I, I, You know, it was funny. These games were on at the same time, and I was – I couldn't keep my eyes off the Rams-Jets. It was just a dumpster fire. It was a tire fire on the side of the road. You couldn't stop looking at it. And it, it's really interesting. So I was texting um, a couple of personnel people in the NFL as we're talking about the Trevor Lawrence thing. And they're texting me back and they're like, God, this is months of content for you. This is crazy. So here's the thing. Trevor Lawrence for Clemson is now not going to go to the Jets probably, right? He's... All these personnel people have been telling me for three years. He would have gone number one as a freshman. 
He would have been the number one pick three years ago. He would have been drafted out of high school. Somebody put him on the scout team. He was that good. The gap between him and you've watched him play this year and Justin Fields is huge. And Justin Fields is good. But this is this is John Elway. This is Andrew Luck. And we don't make that commentary very much on quarterbacks. We never talked about a quarterback out of college like John Elway before John Elway. We I never talked about a college quarterback like Andrew Luck before Andrew Luck. Okay, this is the third quarterback in my life that's a can't miss, will overcome even average to mediocre coaching, right? Bad coaching, he'll overcome it. Justin Fields will not. So this morning, the Jets have a dilemma on their hands. What do we do with the number two pick? Because, like, the Jets already have two firsts, a second, and two thirds. So if you look at who is drafting now in the top 15 picks, I think there's four teams that will strongly consider getting a quarterback. And Joy and I will tell you this over and over. The closer you get to the draft, the crazier the teams get about quarterback. Like, remember, we're always talking ourselves out of quarterbacks. And then Jordan Love, the Packers move up to get him. That's just the way the draft works. Is that People go crazy. They move up to get quarterbacks. And the closer you get to a draft, so it's like everybody's wedding. Oh, let's not spend too much money. The closer you get to the wedding, well, we don't want to have a bad photographer. And you got to have flowers. Pretty soon when you look up, you got a gigantic bill. Weddings and drafts. The closer you get, the more you spend. So you look at this. Carolina at four could move up and give the Jets. They'll give them like a first round pick or more. Then you go down. Okay, Falcons may not. Dolphins have two. Uh, Eagles won't draft another quarterback. Cowboys won't. Chargers won't. Giants won't. Lions probably. San Francisco would, Denver's going to consider it, Minnesota, New England. So I think four out of 15 teams, Patriots, Vikings, Broncos, Carolina, maybe nine, maybe five, they're going to get a quarterback. And that mean, and they're going to spend something for it. I mean, hell, the Jets gave up three second-round picks, I think it was, to get a quarterback in Sam Darnold, right? Um, they're, so the Jets already have all these picks. They're going to get multiple picks. Sam Darnold is still cheap. And now the job, because you're not getting Trevor Lawrence, is not as attractive. You're not going to get Urban Meyer now. You're not going to get an Urban Meyer, even if it's an Ohio State quarterback. You're not going to get Urban Meyer for Justin Fields and Sam Darnold. You're not going to get Lincoln Riley. You're not going to get Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator for the Bills. He's going to get, he's going to have his choice of jobs. It's not as attractive a job now. So are you sure I'm going to go with Justin Fields, who I've watched play four times this year, and three of four, I'm like, eh, eh. Ohio State's got way better personnel than all Northwestern. Eh, I'm not sure. And my personnel people are saying, eh, there's no guarantees with Justin Fields. Big question. You're not going to get as good a coach. The Jets can get more picks, keep Darnold, got a capable GM, what if somebody gave you a first and a second, and now you have the Jets? Three firsts and two seconds and two thirds, and then you get another number one next year. Or, or somebody gives you a first and a starting corner who's a high-level player. I talked to one GM yesterday who said, I wouldn't want a ton of picks. I'd want one great pick and a starter somewhere. I don't want too many. I don't want to have eight guys and give my new head coach eight kids. I wouldn't mind having like a starting great corner and a first-round pick, so you can move up nine spots. So the world's changed on this thing. I think it's a big gap between, all right, Trevor Lawrence, you're going to get an Urban Meyer-level guy, or a Brian Dable, a great coordinator. That's a different conversation than Justin Fields, Sam Darnold, Sam still cheap, a lot of cap space, a bunch of picks with Sam. The new GM, Joe Douglas, had a very good draft last year. Can he do it again? I, I I don't know. I think I just, I, I start looking around and everything changed. Maybe the Jets won't have leverage. Maybe Carolina says, we're not willing to do what you want to do. We'll stay with Teddy Bridgewater. We're almost winning with Teddy, Teddy now with a bad defense and a rebuild. So I thought, the, I thought it was more than just losing Trevor Lawrence. I think it became a, a massive dilemma for the New York Jets. This morning, what would I do? I think I'd keep Sam Darnold. If somebody came and gave me a starting high-end corner to solve one of my problems, and I got another first-round pick and a third, and that's what somebody's going to do. I mean, I, I, folks, I was looking at this this morning. Philadelphia gave up five picks four years ago to move up. 
It, you're kidding yourself if you don't think an NFL team, as we get close to the draft, is not going to move up and give three or four picks. This is we've we've watched this over and over and over again. They're going to start fight. Listen, you if you don't have a quarterback in this league, Bill Belichick lost again. If you don't have the right guy at quarterback, Belichick got fired. Belichick's won forty three percent of his games. So I to me this morning, I think I keep Sam Darnold. Get more picks. Keep building a fortress up. And then in one year, if Darnold's not what you think, you've rebuilt the O-line. you got a starting corner. you got multiple picks. I mean, that, that's the way I look at it. You, you, unless somebody just, you know, I, 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 what do you tell me. Am I nuts on this? Justin Fields, you watched him against Northwestern. Ah, I'm not I'm not rebooting the franchise for that. Now, if he comes out this week against you know in 10 days or whatever against Clemson and Justin Fields chops it up and chops Clemson up, maybe I have a different opinion. This morning I keep Darnold. That's what I do. I keep Darnold.